Hey guys, Kurt Chan, Technical Vandals at Autodesk, and today I want to show you on how to work with the trace operation as well as the text command inside of Fusion 360. So let's go ahead and dive right in. Uh, the example I put together is working on a rotor for a car. And rotors come in all different shapes and sizes as well as types. You have you know, slot rotors as well as drilled ro rotors. And in this example, I'm going to show you how do we create some of the slots on a rotor. As you can see for this image right here, the slot comes at an angle and runs off the edge of the rotor. As well as another example I have is where the rotor the actual the the slot comes in at an angle then cuts in and then comes out so kind of like a lead in and lead out so I want to talk to you about how we can leverage the trace command and the trace operation in this example as well as how we can actually apply and use you know text again and use the trace operation in doing text so let's go ahead and dive right in so what you'll see here is I always like to work with selection sets. Now I'm just going to go ahead and concentrate strictly on that rotor, right click and I can just isolate on my selection set, look at that guy straight forward, and now dive into what I want to do. Now I can honestly use under sketch, use the slot command here, and what that does is it would actually create a slot for me on the rotor. But the, the thing about it, let me go and just do this for you really quickly, is when I actually create the slot, it's going to take a look at it a little bit closer is I'll use a center to center slot and just do it at an angle when I do it this way and I go over to the cam environment when I use the slot toolpath command what that does is it actually will follow the center of the slot but the diameter that I pick of the tool will make now that the slot diameter so it all depends so the slot diameter here has to match up with the tool diameter you're going to use in cam really key when you use a trace operation, you have a little bit more flexibility as well as you can get really creative with some of your, your toolpath creations. So instead of using and creating a slot here, what I'll use, I'll just do an open contour. So I'll actually create an arced slot, which is what I want to create in the long term. If I just go from point to point, do a three point arc, do it at an angle, I can actually set a diameter for this or add all my dimensions and so forth. But I'm going to go ahead and just pattern this specifically. So I'm going to pick this is my this is what I want to pattern. I'll have it go along the center. And let's go with an instances of eight here. And now once I have my entire pattern, I'm going to now go ahead and hop over to Cam and, and apply my trace operation. So all it is is drop under model, come on down to Cam. Now I'm in the Cam environment. One thing to keep in mind too is that you know you know in machining there's a couple different approaches always and maybe for example for this rotor is that maybe we started off on a lathe to get down to the exact size then came in and brought on a mill and then applied all the features that I want it's like the slots the drills and everything going forward so sometimes when you actually define under setup we typically are familiar with just saying this is the size of my stock and then rough away everything and now I have that part. Well, everything has been roughed away. So what I like to do is make a copy of the body that's already at the exact size, and now use that to define my stock, because I've already roughed away everything. Let me show you what I mean by this, is that first, let me pick the model that I want to machine. So let me go in under model, pick, I want to machine the rotor, okay? Now, let me define the work coordinate system. It's not in the correct direction, so remember, if I click the stem of the arrow, then let's say a face normal to what it needs to be, now the tool is coming out in the correct direction. So under stock now, instead of now saying defining the fixed or relative size, I can drop down and pick from solid. So I've made a copy of the rotor, so under my browser, I can go ahead and now pick, see I have two of them, I can now define the stock by a body that I've modeled or I made a copy of, and now just go in and say okay and now since it's to that exact size that it, what it needs to be because it was created on the lathe first I'm gonna go ahead and add the slots now I can go ahead and move forward so from here under 2d I'm gonna drop down and go to trace pick the tool that I want to work with so instead of doing a flat end mill I'll pick a ball end mill I'll filter out a diameter of let's go with six and now you can see I have anyone I can pick from go and pick this one say okay and now the key is moving left to right geometry. I'm going to pick all 
the arcs that I have here that I want for my slots on my rotor. Now, you can see that the sketch sits on the top of the rotor, right? Well, the problem here is that it's not going to machine anything. It's just going to follow along this these arcs. So what I have to do under passes, I need to adjust the axial offset. So I want to say follow these arcs but machine down negative 1.2 millimeters. So now I'm defining how deep this needs to go down. So to verify, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn off the geometry, okay? Only look at the toolpath that we have here, right click on the setup, come in down here to simulate, and now I'm just going to turn on the stock and you can see, remember the body that I picked and, and, and defined? This is actually the size. Now I'm going to say, let me go in and hit play, and now it's going to go through and machine those slots at the angle that I wanted to right there and as well as down negative 1.2 so that deep so this is one technique of how we can use the trace operation to create these slots let's talk about another way we can use trace on how we want to create maybe the slots at an angle right so have it instead of just plunging down then cutting it I want to come in at an angle cut and then come back out for that specific example right here that I want to show you so let me go and just turn on my geometry again hop back over here to model coming over here I'm just gonna hide this initial sketch that I do have which is no need and now let's create and talk about creating those other slots another technique so just for reference again let's go and take a look at that that picture here as you can see it kinda comes out of the angle cuts in and comes back out how are we gonna do that so actually what I did earlier was I like to work in cross sections and if I do a section analysis, I'm going to have my slot at an angle, which is going to be here, but, but go down a little bit. So I created a sketch here. Let's go ahead and edit this sketch and take a look at you know, what you know, we what have we here. here. So as you can see here, what I have is it comes in at an angle, then comes down, cuts down. I can define how deep I want it to go, and then comes back up. So this is how I'm going to create that slot to adjust coming in, going down and coming back out without really relying on the, the lead in and lead out transitions here. Let's take a look at how this is gonna look in the, the long term. So once I have this, let me go and just turn off the section analysis. And of course I would do this specific sketch, pattern it of course, or create multiple ones and then use that in my trace operation. So back under cam, come down, now I'm going to hop back over. I'm going to create a new setup once again to reiterate. Come over here to setup. Let's go ahead and define the geometry I want to machine. Go and pick model. That's what I'm going to machine, which is this rotor. Let's go ahead and readjust the XY, the work coordinate system. Click on the stem. Click a face. We'll make it normal too now. Now what I got to do is go back and now pick under stock. Let's go pick under fixed size from solid. Let's go pick that, that solid that I want to use to define the, the actual stock that I'm working with. I've already machined down to that, to that layer on the lathe. Say OK. And now all I have to do is under 2D, drop down, go to trace. I'm going to use the same tool. I'm going to come here under geometry. And now I'm going to pick that sketch all in one continuous fashion. So pick this one, that and that to follow along okay under passes or I can leave the actual offset because there's no need this is determining how where it's going to start and how far it's going to cut down and come back out I can even turn off the lead in and lead out transitions because there's no need for this so if I go in and say okay now now it's going to go through and let's go in and turn off the geometry so you don't see it All I'm going to see is just the toolpath under right click on setup simulate let's turn on the stock so we can see and let's see how this guy is going to look go ahead and hit play and now it's going to cut down follow along and create that kind of transition see that kind of cut right there come out and cut back out that's how i can create something really similar to this guy getting that look that i'm looking for so hopefully this helps you out in regards to how we can leverage 
the trace operation to follow sketches that we create inside of Fusion 360. Lastly, let's talk about text really quickly. And I've talked about text before. So if you look at one of the videos in the upper right hand corner, uh, you can look at how we can work with SVG files and projecting them as well as take a look at Kachim's video that he's done in the past and working with text, upper right hand video, side of the, the corner of your screen again. These are two great examples to go into a little bit more detail, but I wanted to just talk about high level again and how we work with text, because you can apply the trace operation and working with it. So let me go back over to the cam environment, come back out, go to model, and we are going to just look at, for example, creating maybe text on the rotor right here and engraving it, right? So if we take a look at straight on, I'm just gonna go up to under sketch, drop down, pick text. I've saved it to my, uh, as a hotkey, or not a hotkey, but on my, on my ribbon toolbar. I'm gonna pick this face that it's gonna be drawn on. And let me just go ahead and uh, apply some text just right here. I'm gonna key in Fusion 360. As you can see, that pops up. I can change the size of it, bold it, do whatever I want. Looks a little too big. Let's change the, the size. Grab the center, positions it just like that. I can say okay. So when you look at it, this is physically like like a decal in a fashion, right? But I actually want line art to work with to use now the trace command to follow along Fusion 360. So what I want to do is we can explode the text. This is very key. So if I hover back over, as you see it highlights, click on it, right click, and I have something called explode text. What that now does is it breaks everything up and now I have all this line geometry that I now can use to now apply a trace operation to follow along, change the axial offset, and now kind of engrave the Fusion 360 in here. Or, if you want, you can actually come back in and actually import an, a .svg file, so scalable vector graphics. I talk about this in a little bit more depth in another video I've done upper right hand corner of your screen to revisit it but to show you really quickly on how we do that is if you come back up to insert drop down insert SVG and I can go through pick an SVG file that I want to work with I'll go grab the fusion logo that I have and I'll just drop this guy right in I can scale it just like this you can see it I'll drag it right up here and let's take a look scale this a little bit bigger and let's just position this guy how maybe we want it to be like that. Say okay. And there is my Fusion 360 logo with its scalable vector graphics. And I can now apply a trace operation to engrave this logo as well. So hopefully this helps you out. To recap, once again, we talked about the trace operation as well as how to import a .svg file as well as work with text and explode it to get that line art to then use the trace operation again for engraving. Hopefully this helps you guys out in a short amount of time. If you liked the video, please click the thumbs up. Follow me on Twitter once again, at Kurt underscore Chan. And thanks again for watching, guys.